Well, see, you're bringing up now one of the uh, one of the other main tenets of effortless mastery. This is all the stuff I just had to figure out. Mm. Usually, people would bring up the question, "Well, what if I really want to play better?" You know, like, and I realized that the also two parts of the brain one is good for one part and one is good for the other there's a certain part of the brain that's perfect for practicing and a certain part of the brain is perfect for playing and never the twain shall meet for example when i am practicing i may be comparing it to what somebody's doing and but then analyzing what is going on in their muscle memory that's not yet going on in mine or or a mental, you know, a mind, uh, what's the other, muscle memory, and I can't think of the word, but I usually use two things, uh, you know, ment skill, motor skill, sorry. Mm -hmm. I mean, harmony is a motor skill, but it's absorbed through practicing. And when you've learned it deep enough, it becomes a motor skill. You put your hands down and they play harmony, you know? Rhythm is, is a motor skill. And, 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 and even lines, you know, is a motor skill. So when I'm training, I'm quantifying, do I have enough motor skill to be able to forget the subject? And when I go into playing, play from the expanded consciousness and it'll be there. Mm. So it actually upgrades the level of what you practice. You don't want to practice something just well enough to know it, but you never hear it in your playing unless you try to put it in there. So what happens is when you mix practicing and playing, you corrupt both states. When I'm, if you're practicing, and 10 minutes later, you're just playing. You're not practicing. And everybody does it. They go into practice room. They're working on the bridge for this one piece. Go back in 10 minutes, and they're just playing the whole tune. And the ego suddenly said subliminally, wait a minute. Can you play? You haven't asked yourself if you can play in 10 minutes now. Let me ask you again. Can you play? So next thing you know, you just you lose the patience of what you're working on. You just start playing. So I always tell people, if you're practicing, it's inspiring. You should be suspicious you're probably not getting anything done. The practicing is about, for me, is only about enhancing abilities. More harmony, right? Depends what you're doing. If it's a classical piece, and then how to practice is another tenet of effortless mastery. But what you want to do, and a lot of students need to hear this, and students from eight to 90 years old, your job when you play is to love what you play, not to judge it. Now that sounds very well and everybody would agree generally, but think about a time when you were playing and judging yourself at the same time. How did you play? Never goes well. At that moment, you go for something that if it was ready, it would have been there. And that's because your practicing was corrupted by too much proving to yourself you can play and not enough work on the mechanics of what, a, you know, if I'm, let's put it this way, uh, in jazz, it's very common to play a B-flat blues. Very easy, right? Mm -hmm. Now I say, okay, let's play it in B. Now, if you're a piano player, that's like, you know, with all due respect to people who are blind, that's like a blind person who walk into the room and everybody, they rearranged all the furniture. Every note that was black is now white. Every note that was white is now black. Now, if you don't study dispassionately models of playing in B, there's never any way they're going to fire off when you're playing, but you can corrupt the playing by trying to get yourself to play in B. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. practicing while you're playing corrupts the playing. Playing while you're practicing erodes the usefulness of it. And if you keep them separate, then when you're practicing, your job is to take an inventory, not necessarily to judge. You know, the funny thing is words have meanings. If you look them up, they may be innocent enough, but what they've come to be. If I calculate and quantify what needs to happen in my playing, that's good. If I judge my playing, it allows the ego in for all sorts of distortion. You know? So I like to say that practicing is about what, I, I set up something I can't do and I work on it until, not even I'm doing it, until the muscles do it. That's effortless mastery. Then when I play, I check the ego by having absolutely no intention of ever playing it. Now if I'm just playing and it comes out, it tells me, well, you kind of got that because you weren't even thinking and it came out. Lose and be, just, you just started playing it, you know? So I have a healthy relationship that I teach between practicing and not looking for the things you practice. What you do when you play, because whatever you are is what you are, you're not going to change it in flight. I've heard many teachers say, 
you know, you should have a standard and this and that. Well, it never works for anybody. And if you watch your teacher, if he can really play, he's not doing it. He, she, or they are not doing it either. They're playing. Just play. I love the mm. time, you mm. know? They're playing. That means you can't play and not accept what's coming out. Then you're not playing anymore. So your job when you're playing is to accept and love. And if you really want to get there all the way, an enlightened version of that is whether it's good or bad. If you get to the point where you have no change in your chemistry, whether you're playing great or it's not happening at all, the gratitude is still there. The, the joy is still there because you mm. programmed it into playing. Joy takes practice. You know, joy means deriving joy when you don't really feel any joy, but just putting acting as if there were joy. Mm -hmm. and what happens is after a while, the mere touching of the instrument creates joy. So therefore, there are no standards to maintain. That is a full-fledged, uh, free run runway to take off from. But I can take note of what's not happening that I wish was happening, mm -hmm. bring it over to the other side of the universe and study it, work on it, and then imbibe it mechanically. Too often there's an understanding of what we're missing, but we don't realize that the problem is not philosophical or spiritual, it's mechanical.